We are in the middle of the jungles of Guyana. Fishing for one of the greatest freshwater game fish in the world, the arapaima. Look at that, jungle beast. I started this adventure in Miami to Georgetown, Guyana. We overnighted there. We jumped on a charter flight in Georgetown. We flew about an hour and a half south to the Rewa River. Met up with some great friends of mine, a couple clients I fished with before, but more importantly, Oliver White. So we uh, just landed in Apatary, and uh, we're gonna jump in the boat and uh, head up to Rewa and uh, get this party started. Who's had a significant impact with Costa Del Mar in protecting the Arapaima here in Guyana. The guys were there to pick us up in some boats. We brought all of our gear up, plus the provisions for the week. So normally what will happen is, you know, this is the driest part of the year. So we come in the dry season because that's when we have the best opportunity. Because this river will come up 40 feet during the rainy season. It will flood over the banks into the jungle there. And uh, all the fish move from the river back into the jungle to spawn and feed. And then as the river recedes, these arapaimas stay trapped in what become these landlocked lagoons. And the rainy season is all interlinked, and during the dry season, they're trapped back there. So we will navigate the river here, pull off and park, drag these boats back to these ponds, and that's where we're gonna catch these fish. Some of them are old oxbows of the river, some of them are just natural depressions, and they vary in size. I mean, some of them are an acre, little tiny ponds, and some of them are 50, 100 acres, huge things. So. Think we brought enough gear? You know, man, I guarantee <laughs> we're missing something, always. We ran about an hour, hour and a half up the river to join another great friend of mine, Matt Brewer, who is the lodge manager here at Rewa. The closest road is over 350 miles from here. We're in the middle of nowhere. My life is consumed with fishing. Fishing in the ocean. Fishing in the river. Fishing in the lakes. I'm obsessed with fishing. Unbelievable. The farm ponds in Tennessee. The trout streams of the Rocky Mountains. Panama, the Bahamas. My backyard. Multi-species. Multi-tackle. Pursue my passion. My obsession. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm obsessed with fishing. What a fish! Ten or fifteen, ten or fifteen minute hike. Yeah, man, this is a short little hike through the jungle. We have a couple of canoes stashed in this pond, so we don't have to drag any boats back or anything. So we'll, we'll go back there and. Uh, this is going to be the true, the real dugout canoe. Yeah, man, this is like a thirty foot, giant dugout canoe, and uh, this has also been uh, where I've caught my biggest arapaima, and oh. the biggest one ever by anyone was also caught here. So there's a lot of big fish in this one. Okay. Yeah, we have, there's a uh, Hymara wolffish back here as well, and definitely peacocks and. Uh, uh, it's a it's a remarkable little corner of the world. All right, let's go catch some arapaima. Oh, you did bring wading boots. Yeah, man. I mean, these guys are barefoot. It can't be that bad. <laughs> Don't be the paranoid American. No. Well, <laughs> you know that's one of the amazing things about the whole program is you know this you know, little tiny fishing program employs the whole village. So guys move boats, women cook, people clean, fishing guides, boat captains. Right. This is pretty amazing. Oh man. To think how they had to find these over time. <laughs> and you know they said there's over a hundred. I mean we've only fished you know 30 or 40 so we're still exploring when we go on this camping trip too. So on the camping trip you're talking about fishing some stuff that Hadn't been fished. Yeah, you know, if we're gonna go camp for four days, then we have uh, the opportunity to go fish stuff we've never seen. Uh huh. I feel like anytime you can get to a pond that has never been fished and there's fish in there, that's always gonna be the highest probability. Mm -hmm. These fish are very boat shy. Fish will like slap their tail in the water. It sounds like a gunshot. Some of the really big fish will actually come to the boat and throw water on you. And um, just and, as a territorial thing, or yeah, just as a get out of my house territorial, you're not welcome here. And that's before you've even made a cast or even hooked one. I mean, sometimes they're just that aggressive and that aware of their surrounding. They're that very, aware, right? Very smart fish. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, this boat is as cool as it gets. <laughs> I mean, this is a first here again. I've never been in a dugout canoe like this. Look at the size of the tree this thing had to have come from. All made by hand. 
They're actually surprisingly stable. They're quiet. I mean, they're great to fish out of. So this is it. This is what we're here for, this kind of pond. Maybe it is the old river channel, an oxbow. And there are, in these guys' land, that they have over 100 square miles. You know, they have about 100 of these. Only 30 or so of them they fish. Some of them are too far to get into and whatnot. But like I said, man, this is just an incredibly unique experience. Super cool to be a part of it. Man, I'm just stunned at how low the water is. You're amazed how low the water is? Yeah. Oh yeah, river otters up here, big one. 12 o'clock just before the next snag. See him sticking his head up? That's pretty cool. Look at this. You wanted to call him in? Yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> this is Nat Geo right here, man. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, is that not the most beautiful thing? Hey, pretty work, man. That's, That's awesome. A, <laughs> That's some, uh. And they're big. I mean, you know they got to be eating a lot of fish. Oh, man, the, the big ones are like six feet long. They're huge. With their tail and everything. That's beautiful. Roman, how'd you learn to do that? Who taught you that? Nobody. Nobody. You learned that all by yourself. Kind of like me and my family. You know what? If you were making that kind of noise around my house, my girls would come running to see what that was too. <laughs> so this pond up in here is where we're going. Yeah, so right around this island, it opens up into a really big, big spot. You know, the good news of the low water is all the fish are concentrated. That's and good. then that, when we do find them, that low water makes it much easier to target them on a fly rod. When the obsession continues. So the idea now is we come in here, we are staying ultra quiet, and we're waiting to see these fish roll. Strip, 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 point, strip, 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 strip. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Keep stripping. This man. is unbelievable. Keep strip. I'm on a truck right now. I'm on a truck. <laughs> this is the Guyana <laughs> giant. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the new Beastmaster 9000. This is hard work. More power, better durability, and heat dispersion. Oh, tripled up! Incredible winding speed. An amazing 250 pounds of max winding power. It's the ultimate toy. And with the new planetary gear system, that equals durability. Incredible winding speed. Yeah, that's a giant. 55 pounds of drag. The Beastmaster 9000 is now a part of my fishing arsenal. The award-winning Z Performance line from CV raises the bar. It's not just fast. It's not just fuel efficient. The CVZ is the entire package. It offers the perfect balance, safe, predictable handling during hard turns and at high speed. And most importantly, the Z stays on plane at lower speed so it can comfortably handle anything Mother Nature can dish out. Experience the exhilarating ride of the CVZ. Schedule a sea trial today. Mercury engine tap. Toughness you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Mercury engine tap. Smooth, quiet power you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you.
The obsession of Carter Andrews is powered by Shimano. Yozuri, engineered to catch. CV Boats, lead the way. And by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. So the idea now is we come in here, we are staying ultra quiet, and we're waiting to see these fish roll. They're air breathers. They can't breathe air. And you'll see them roll, and they stay in that general area. So hopefully we can locate four or five fish. He sees them. That little puff right there. Strip, 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 point, strip, 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 strip. Keep stripping, keep stripping. Keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. This is unbelievable. <laughs> keep stripping. This man. is unbelievable. Keep stripping, keep stripping, keep stripping. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm on a truck right now. I'm on a truck. This is the Guyana giant. Oh, oh my that? God. <laughs> 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 I can't do anything. Look at this. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. What? This makes that whole thing worthwhile. <laughs> what a beautiful creature. <sighs> Woo! Look at that battle. <laughs> most unique. <laughs> this, without a doubt, that's the no, most unique fish I have ever caught. Okay. <laughs> Look at that power of the tail. That is raw power right there. Oh my gosh. That's like a gator taking off. All right, oh. bring back. Faster to get tired, faster to get straight. Okay, all right. All right, I got him. Let out some line, let out some line. Sorry, buddy. All right, we got to do this quick. Ready? Look at this thing. That is amazing. Look at the scales on his back. That's armor plated. Yeah, they're actually uh, working on turning that into bulletproof vest. All right, hold on. You ready? One more. You ready? Oliver, you ready? Okay, that's good. Thank you. There you go. Oh, outstanding. Nice job, man. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, baby! That is the giants that live in Guyana. Trust me, what an experience this is. I mean, absolutely outstanding. Rovin, is you okay? Part of what, being a responsible angler, there he is, he just released. Part of being a responsible angler is good releases. And on a fish like this, it's really important to take care of them. You see how we handled that fish at the boat side? And also I took the time releasing him. That's what it's all about. Proper release, fight the fish quick, get it into the boat. Oh. Good job, man. Nicely done. Hold on. Nicely done. Thanks, boss. Oh, that was quick, huh? That was quick. <laughs> I mean, he had it in the leader in 30 seconds. Nice job. Oh, uh, the short stick. Nice. Your turn. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that finds your dinner by finding your dinner's dinner. A you that isn't afraid to pick a fight with something that has a sword for a nose. This is for that you.
The following is brought to you by Yo Tsuri. Fish the best. You know, one of the things that you've been talking about is is indie fish. Indie fly, yeah. Excuse me, indie fly. And it's a program that Costa is now their nonprofit arm is now working with, right? Yeah, so we had so much success with this model here in Guyana. Of, you know, this is a program where, you know, the, the village, the entire indigenous people own 100% of this business, right? And we, we trained them and we brought them, you know, brought them the gear they needed, helped them get a grant money. Um, but the village owns the business in its entirety, so it benefits 100% economically from it. And in turn, um, you've created a livelihood that allows them to be conservationist. The other option for these guys was all exploitive. You know, they could have sold the timber rights or sold the mining rights, but now they're incentivized to protect their entire land, you know, which is 100 square miles. So, I mean, by creating a fishing lodge, retake people fly fishing, catch and release, man, you've protected 100 square miles of rainforest, you've created jobs for an entire village, and you've created a village in a little corner of the world um, that is very conservation-minded protecting one of the greatest freshwater game fish in the world. That's right. And, you know, so sport fishing as a method of conservation is kind of a new concept. And it's um, working here. And it works so well here that uh, we uh, formed a nonprofit called Indie Fly with, uh, with the aspiration of replicating this, you know, globally, you know, looking around the world for projects where we can um, help local communities move into a conservation sport fishing business where they can own it and profit from it and in turn protect their areas. Boy, this is so cool fishing back in here. All this structure, those wolf fish lay against the log on the bottom and they look just like the log. my wolf fish. He ate it coming off the log too. Oh, oh, oh jumping one. <laughs> Look at that. Outstanding. Look at this thing. You guys, I can't even, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Look at this thing. <coughs> Look at this thing. Oliver, can you hold that rod for me? Got it. Look at that. Look at that. Jungle beast. Look at the teeth in those things. Look at that. That's what I was looking for. What a gorgeous fish. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. Pull up. Now look at these teeth. Look at that. Look, look, look at those lower gums. Look at those. He lays up beside those logs in there. Should we get a picture? No. Yeah, you let him go. Good job, man. Love that right there, man. Love that. This is why we are obsessed. On the Uzuri, baby! It's the Mag Darter, man! The Crystal 3D Shrimp. Here we go! There he is! Big Bull! Big Bull! Love that popper in the side of his mouth. Look at oh, this fish. Crush that Yozuri. You know, I'm a huge believer in this Yozuri paint. I'm telling you, this is the fluorocarbon of all fluorocarbons. Skipping across the surface, that Yozuri. There he is! Nice bite! Oh my gosh! Look at him! Yeah, baby, Yozuri! I don't go fishing without him. Shimano's SWX concept. Power, rigidity, toughness, Woo! drag performance, and water resistance. Absolute power right here, baby! To give you retrieving power, strength, and durability. There he is. X-Ship, cranking power. On the Stella. X-Shield, extreme water resistance <laughs> in the harshest yeah! conditions. X-Tough Drag, ultimate smoothness and power to move big fish. The all-new Stella, show your power. Sing to me, Stella.
Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. With Ray Marine's superior high fidelity chirp sonar vision, you'll never look at fishing the same again. You're already the predator above the water. Now go find your prey below it. Ray Marine. Visit raymarine.com to get in on the action. I'm The obsession of Carter Andrews is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Ray Marine, don't just go fishing, go hunting. Underwater with Ray Marine. And by Power Pro. Amazing what was all in there. There were like three fish there. Yeah. And then the air one ate you. Yeah, I never even saw those. Got him. Big one. <laughs> nice job, Oliver. Nice job, Oliver. Did you Look. hear him eat? Outstanding! Look at that! Did you hear him eat yeah. the fly? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Coming up. I can't believe after all that commotion <laughs> that he stuck around in there. You want me to run the GoPro? Something like. Okay. Well, do you want me to get a picture of you, you Oliver? Yourself? Bear with me? No, you all, man. Okay. Go with me. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get, get off the hook. There you go. Good. Flies clean. Yeah, it was clean. <coughs> nice! <coughs> when, you can let him go whenever you want. Yeah, but... I'm waiting for him to take a breath. Oh. Yeah, breath before you have to go. Oh, really? Okay. Let's see if we can get that breath. <laughs> Breath my ass. <laughs> hey. Thanks, Roven. Roven. Yeah, another buddy. great, great fish. Awesome, buddy. Good job. Thanks, Thanks man. man. <laughs> On the board. Two for two. Two for two. You're two up. for two. I heard, heard it underwater. before I felt it. Huh? Really? I mean, heard it before I you felt it. You hear it underwater. I mean, they suck that much water, move that much stuff when they feed. It's just, I've never seen another fish do that. There we are, giants in Guyana. Just unbelievable. You know, we saw those two fish, we saw two fish roll. Oliver makes a perfect cast in there and all of a sudden the arowana grabbed his fly and created all that commotion and disturbance. I thought for sure it was over. 
Yeah, no, you know, I'm Robin not. said, put it back in there, put it back in there, and all of a sudden, and you hear this noise underwater. And Robin starts yelling, set the hook, set the hook, but I hadn't felt anything yet. That's, that's impressive stuff. <coughs> this is why we came all the way to Guyana, was to see that magnificent fish. And even better yet, we're taking them on fly. You know, you're getting 120, 140 pound fish eating a fly in fresh water. That's... It's pretty amazing. Y'all have done a great job here. You know, there are a lot of firsts for me. We got more. My, my dugout <laughs> canoe right here is as exciting as anything. What a spectacular game fish. Something like that in fresh water. You know, and it's so unique, right? I mean, one of the things that makes it so special is this is literally the only place in the world that you can have this opportunity, number of opportunities. I mean, they exist all throughout the Amazon, but I mean, it's really rare to see them in Brazil. Much, much, less likely to ever get a get a shot much less catch one man and here man we, we've, we've gotten two in two hours yeah we've seen 15 right and then you know, that's a pretty pretty good start this is day one this is day one <laughs>